Hi guys. Um, after the first video, I didn't really stop, so I kind of got to a point and, and I had enough footage to go and edit a video and make one. Um, but I did actually continue doing what I'm doing, which is chucking bits of metal in acid and see what happens. Um, so I did some more similar to the first video, um, which will be at the start of this one. Um, but after that, shortly, well, shortly after that, I invested in a um, ultrasonic cleaner. Um, and that gives kind of mixed results regarding ultrasonic cleaning and I'll probably do a video on, on what I find is the best uh, cleaning products for that. However, I chucked a load of acid in it um, and that gives some really interesting and actually quite good results. Um, wasn't really sure if that was down to the ultrasonics or whether it's down to the temperature. Um, I suspect the latter and therefore I'm now building a hot acid bath. So whoever thought hot acid in your garage wasn't a good idea. Uh, so yes, if you're interested on, on how this goes, and also an idea um, which somebody at Voltzone gave me about um, wallpaper paste and, and citric acid, I'm going to try that too. So yeah, if you're interested, keep watching. Okay, time for another experiment. So I'm building a, um, basically a platform for a winch to sit on for a trailer, um, something nice and sturdy. But I can't easily clean down the uh, inside of the boards of those, so we're going to give the old citric acid another try. Um, now this time I'm doing something a bit different, so I'll just show you and put the camera up. So I got a bucket of quite strong citric acid mix with a little bit of soap in there and the ultrasonic cleaner. Now I don't know if this is going to work, if the basically they have to be in direct contact or not, but I'm going to give it an experiment to see if it cleans them in the bucket. It would be really cool if it did. And save some cleaning as well. So uh, I'm going to give that a buzz and let it start running for uh, 25 minutes. We'll see where we get to. So, just so you can see before. Oops. So you can see before. I'll see in a little bit. Right, they've been in there for about an hour and a half now and it's up to vaguely 50 degrees, so it's been between 40 and 50 degrees. 25 minutes running on the uh, ultrasonic cleaner. Making quick progress of that, isn't it? So I'm not sure if it's just the heat in the citric acid or if it's the, uh, the cleaner too. You can see bubbles dancing around in this bucket as well, so at least some of the ultrasonic cleaning uh, I don't know, vibrations are getting through to the bucket at least. Right, it's been in for about five hours now, and it's had about... Ow, it's hot. <laughs> Whoa, check that out. And uh, it's been running for uh, 50 minutes in total. So, so I'm not sure, we'll do an experiment because I also made this today. I bought, I'm going to put a heating element on that. I'm kind of curious to know if just heating up the citric acid speeds things up as fast as the, uh, the tank does, or if the actual the ultrasonic's got something to do with it or not. So uh, we'll do a little experiment with that with an old kettle element or something. Okay, it's been in for about six hours now in total. Um, temperatures range between 40 and 50 degrees, um, and I've had it zapping for about uh, probably an hour in total. Look at that. <laughs> That's awesome. Back to bare metal. There's a few little bits on there which uh, it's not quite got to, but yeah, I'm really impressed by that and how fast it's done it as well. Okay, so left it overnight, so it's been in now for effectively about 20, 20 hours or so. Um, it's nice and cold now as well. Look at that. So the, the piece there on the left is actually the off cut. So before and after, some difference, isn't there? In uh, not a lot of time, really. Citric acid for the win! Uh, I just ended up with a load of uh, nuts and bolts which came with something I bought. They're just in a, in a box that was on it. Um, and they're all kind of all gnarly. So you're, not, you're never going to use rusty nuts and bolts like this. They end up in the scrap bin. Um, so while I got the acid out, I thought doing another little experiment to see, uh, see if we can make them usable. So, got my trusty bucket. Nice hot water. It's quick for dissolving the uh, acid. Not sure how much you need in there. 
There is scientifically measured amounts of acid in there. About that much. <laughs> I'm going to give it a stir with a melt screwdriver. So it really doesn't take long to dissolve at all. I'm going to do it before and after, so I'm going to chuck that lot in there and hopefully I'll come out with a lot of usable nuts and bolts at the end of it. A bit more water. Now the only other thing I'm going to add, a bit of uh, washing up liquid. Uh, basically all the parts are really oily in there, so I'm hoping it'll help break up the grease and help the acid get to work. Leave that for a few days and I'll sh sh show you how I've got on. Uh, that's only been 30 seconds. <laughs> so there's something in there the acid really likes. So maybe I won't leave it for quite so long before I check it. Uh, I just came into the garage tonight to tidy up after doing a handbrake video. <laughs> and I realised I'd not... Uh, taking the, the nuts and bolts I stuck in the acid the day out of the, uh, the acid. So they've actually been sat after all the, the work they went through in the in the heater and the ultrasonic cleaner. Uh, they've been sat for a couple of days now as well. Uh, not a problem I don't think, because I say the acid was probably well spent by that point. Um, but look at that! I'm going to tip them out. I'd say they're lucky. Awesome! No sign of oxide in there at all. So the hot acid bath. Um, I basically pulled this out of a house. I'm helping someone rip out. Uh, it's just a cold water tank. Um, the other day, I thought it can be come in handy. Save it from the skip. Comes with a handy lid. Stops the children going for a swim, which is always a good idea. Um, I took the copper pipe off the side and. Uh, put a standard little tap on so I can drain it nice and easy. Same as the um, ultrasonic cleaner, which gave me the idea in the first place. Obviously, I need to give it a good clean. Uh, to make it hot, might take a while to get up to temperature, but I got a lowest power rating uh, submersible camping heater I could find on eBay. It's 700 watt, this one. Uh, so that's quite low rating for a large volume of water. So basically, it means I don't have to worry about it overheating and overboiling. Um, I don't think it'll actually get to that point, but maybe wrong. It's supposed to be a UK plug, bloody eBay sellers. So yeah, so I'll swap the plug on that as well. Okay, builder's bucket. The hot water. Ooh, we put the valve off. I have. <laughs> Just short of two builders buckets worth of uh, hot water. Out the taps of our house, it comes about 50 degrees. In goes the citric acid, it's about 300 grams thereabouts. Okay, let us do. So, I may add some more. Citric acid, depending on how it goes. Okay, I'm going to pop that in the bottom just to protect the plastic tub from the heating element. Just in case. Because the spring's been on a fire. If I can get it in. Two of those. So just so it can be compared to the last experiment with the uh, ultrasonic cleaner. So a block of steel. In the same cut I think. 
put that bad boy in. A bit of rusty bike chain. These won't all fit in in one go. Uh, some spring plates, pretty heavily rusted, so again they've been involved in the fire, so whether the car should be used or not, I need to find out. I'll do those in two halves, I think. Random bit of something, I ain't got a clue what that is. It was melted on the floor pan. And the handbrake. So that's at 50 at the minute. Heat, heat's on. Come back and check in a bit what temperature we're at. Have a look at it. Right, I had to go out. So I dragged it outside because I didn't know it would leave it running in the garage. Um, and that was 2 hours and 20 minutes ago. Um, we're currently at, give or take, 68 degrees, so uh, probably an average of 60 then. Let's have a look. Hey, saw blades. You didn't see me put these in actually, I snuck them in after the, uh, I stopped the camera. They're pretty much clean already. Looking good. So it's pretty much down to bare metal, wherever it needs to be. And the thick stuff's just loose to the rock. It rubs off. Well, that's not done quite so well, that one. It rubs off, look. So for that side. Uh, that one's a bit bit harder. That one's a bit longer, that one. Hey, <laughs> bike chain. That's totally clean. And our control block. Ah, and the con doesn't, doesn't seem to have done as well as one in the ultrasonic cleaner in the same time. Ow, that's hot. <laughs> no, it's not. So it came out of the ultrasonic cleaner really clean. Whereas, it's still got a bit of uh, clean to go in that. Handbrake's not too bad. It's actually got lots of old paint on there. Again, this is involved in the fire, so paint's burnt on and uh, it's quite heavily pitted anyway. I'll chuck that back in for a bit, I think. Random crappy thing. It's clean where it's bare and it's not where it's not. What's the last thing I forgot? Oh yeah. So they're not bad. I probably want to go back in for a bit longer. They're all burnt on rubbish, that's the issue with those, is they've got rubbish on them. So I'm probably going to rub them all back with a bit of uh, a wire brush. Should come back in for another hour. Right, I've uh, scrubbed all the bits with the wire brush and chucked them back in the acid. And uh, so while they're hobbling and bubbling away, there's another experiment I want to do. Um, now this came about because of my first video. Um, so it basically spawned a discussion on the Vault Zone form of VZI, um, which was well, say I can't really take credit for this, but basically it's wallpaper paste. So I thought I'm going to try this one. So I'm going to hit one, two, three. No quantities were given, so I'm making this all up as I go along. To be perfectly honest with you, and I'm going to do one of citric acid. So three wallpaper paste, just standard cheapo stuff, and one citric acid. Um, and what it basically said is you could use. Um, wallpaper paste on a bit of rusty car or if you've got a bit of bodywork where the, the paint's burst through with rust and you 
you want to treat that rust before you can repaint it or before you can treat the metal even. Get a bit of wallpaper paste, make a paste up, whack it on. Now, uh, I can't say how wallpaper paste or citric acid will affect paint, probably not badly at all, I, but I don't know that, so before you go and stick it on a, a nice car and on the paintwork and potentially ruin something, please don't do it, please check it's going to be alright for you before I we'll take a blame for that one. But, I've got a piece of metal which I thought we can try it on. I'm just curious to see if it does work or not. Yeah, that's pasty enough. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put two blobs on, so my rusty blob of the car's there. Splat. Another rusty blob's here. I've got a bit left in there, so I'm going to do a third one, one super runny one. in case drying it out or something uh, causes a problem. So that one's a bit runny, a bit more sloppy. I'll put that one in the middle, see how that one goes. Probably pan. So this one's going to have cling film on it. And this one's a sloppy one. And this one's just, I don't know, the test, whatever. So I'm going to get a bit of cling film. I'm going to put it over this one. The idea is it stops it from drying out. If I can get this stupid cling film to start. God, I hate this stuff. So I'm going to lay it over the top of that one. And I'm probably going to leave this one till tomorrow. Leave it overnight. A bit of a test to see how well it clears the metal underneath it. So this stuff's, if you look closely, it's pretty heavily rusted, this, this bar. Okay, four and a half hours in, we're at 65 degrees C. It looks hotter than that, bubbling bubbling away. Turn the heater off. So, my last little look. There we go, so the handbrake's looking pretty good. It's the only stuff that's left in it really is the uh, really heavily coated stuff which is loose. So I think that's as good as it needs to be to be honest with you. The handle had like a plastic been burnt onto it, so uh, brilliant stuff. Spring plate's looking really good. I have to go back into the uh, other half doing. Stuck off the heavy stuff now, more or less. Random thing. Nicely stripped. And our test piece. So, no, not completely stripped. Oh shit, ow, 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 really hot. <laughs> so it's not completely stripped. So, looking at comparing the two, it does seem to work. You heat it up like this, it seems to work quicker than having it sat for a couple of days, obviously. But um, if you've got the luxury of a uh, ultrasonic cleaner, it does seem to free up the, uh, the rust off the, the surface and help it clean it. So uh, the ultrasonic one, it came out almost immaculate after a couple of hours. So uh, yeah, I guess that's the way to go. And uh, heating up second best. Oh, they're looking good now. So uh, I've come into the garage tonight and I just want to show you the results from today's little hot acid bath experiment. So everything on this side of the table is from the hot acid. I'm a little bit disappointed. It's basically everything seems to have reverted back to being rusty, nasty yuck. Um, so it's quite disappointing. Um, I don't understand why the results are so much different to the ultrasonic cleaner because the only difference really was the temperature, which is about 15 degrees hotter. Um, obviously, the ultrasonic cleaner had the ultrasonic cleaning 
aspect to it, but I don't understand why the parts have reverted back to that whereas they didn't. And especially when you compare it to the original lot. So this is basically what I did in the, the first video, um, and they were done at room temperature, but it was very, very cold in here because it was about 10 weeks ago. Um, and they looked absolutely amazing. And I say that's why I was so impressed by citric acid and why I thought maybe I can improve this process. But I don't think you can. Well, at least I haven't. Um, so, yeah, so hot acid bath is not for the win. Uh, what you need to do is spend uh, two to three days at room temperature, take your time, and it certainly seems to give you the better results rather than uh, rushing it with the heat. Okay. So we've got the three, uh, the three tests we did. One was the with the cellophane to stop it from going dry. The standard one, which is kind of like ugh, chewing gum, chewy, and then we did the sloppy one in the middle, which also feels the same to be honest with you. So all I'm going to do now is clean them all off. And they just push off, just blobs. This is really fine. Why? Well, just because I'm not trying to scrub it off, I just want to see what surface is left behind. Well, it looks pretty identical to be honest with you. So there doesn't seem to be any difference between the three. So basically just mix it up and whack it on. It's not kind of gone right back as, as much as I hoped it would do. So uh, see if we can get a better view for you. It's certainly cleaned up the metal back to, more or less, back to uh, bare metal. So I suspect if you had a, a bubble where the, the paint had cracked off your, your bodywork and you popped it on there, it would help clean it back and possibly as close to the paint as you can do, but I don't know if it would damage the paint at all. I just don't know. Um, but, yeah, interesting experiment. It kind of worked. Kind of. <laughs> Cheers, guys.